Hello there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky 2nd Chapter. I'm in Grand Cell Castle and I'm getting out of there. Even already. Time does fly when you're having fun. The only letter victim we've yet to visit is the Liberal News. Yep. Well, let's not waste any more time, eh? Let's get over there and see what's what. Okay, well, sounds like a plan. But before we do that, uh, we have a quest that we've had for quite some time that we need to fix, which is the Grand Cell Sewer Monster. So we are going to go to the Grand Cell Sewers, which are actually right next to the uh, Liberal News Organization. We'll go there first. Uh, that's probably what's going to be, for the most part, this entire video is going through these god-awful sewers. But again, I will be skipping out duplicate random battles as usual and uh, cutting out backtracking because it's just a nightmare to go through sewers. This is nothing compared to those sewers that we saw in the prologue. But first things first, we have some fishing! I caught an eel, which is, eh, okay. But uh, let's keep on moving and exploring. Uh, over here to the right is a total dead end, so don't bother. And a lot of the monsters here don't chase you, which is a blessing. Yikes! Except for this asshole who got a surprise attack on me. The Mad Snail. Okay. Oh, he's weak for a lot of magic, actually. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to put on not only the ruby, but also, I think it's the sapphire? Maybe it's emerald. I don't know. Those, those medallions that make your attacks elemental? If all the enemies here have elemental uh, weaknesses like that, it wouldn't be bad. Put it on, uh, like, Estelle and, um, and what's-his-face? Oliver, because they have such uh, wide-range attacks. That would be nice. Get some mystery paste there. And uh, head on back. Now we're going to go down here. And this room I'm going to cut back to. So remember this room. Uh, first things first. Head to the right. Grab some silver gauntlets. Which is an upgrade for Zane. Go ahead and put that on them. Yeah. Nice. Raises his attack by quite a bit. Oh, what do we have? Like little mosquito. Ooh, they can poison. Ooh, that's no good. Okay, so the Great Moth. Oh, weak to fire as well. Oh, huh, maybe just that fire one then. Maybe I'll give it to uh, Estelle and have a fire-based Chew Hurricane and just kick the crap out of everybody. Or her regular Chew Hurricane could just suffice. Hey, it works for me. I'm not one to complain. Well, awesome. So now we want to go this way and, uh, whoa. Don't want another attack. You see another treasure there, which we can't get to that way, but if we go over here, this roundabout route, we can grab it. Ooh, some Edel armor, which is actually really nice for Oliver. Uh, it's an upgrade, and it increases defense, magic attack, and magic defense for men only, so that's real nice for him. Anyway, I'm going to meet you back in that room that I pointed out earlier. I'm back at that room that I said that it was, and I went ahead and I equipped it Estelle with that Ruby Talisman, and I upgraded uh, Oliver's Orbment so that he has the mighty, where is it, Spiral Flare spell. That'll come in real handy for the uh, quest boss coming up. First things first, we're going to head all the way down and go in here for some treasure. Get some smelling salts. And now we're going to go all the way back up, avoiding that middle door. There's something in there right now, but we can't do anything with it quite yet, so I'm not too uh, concerned about it. Anyway, going over here, whoa, we can go up here, get a Xerum capsule, and head south. And here's our monster, or monsters, it's never just one. And the reason why I gave Estelle that ruby talisman is so that she can get in the center of all these guys and blast them with a true hurricane because they're all weak to fire. It's amazing! Yeah. And these guys can be a royal pain, too. So I'm going to basically have Chloe and Oliver on casting duty uh, to get as many of these guys killed as humanly possible. And if anybody um, is not in range, I'm going to have Zane just... Punch them, pretty much, is his job. Um, if you want to, you can use the, um, what is it, the, uh, the quick draw spell that Oliver has. Um, but I think that spiral flare will probably be a little bit better. But the thing is with these guys is that they can summon allies, deal a lot of damage, reduce your speed, absorb your HP so you don't have enough speed to kill them, plus they're healing themselves, 
Plus, they're summoning more allies. Like, they are a bitch. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Bam! Look at that! Look at that! It's nice. And then again with her true hurricane, because everybody's weak to fire, basically just move her wherever you can hit the most, and continue doing it to try to wipe the field of all the people that they try to summon. Uh, let's see, what else can we have? Could we have any kind of... Oh, that's a medium range. Uh, yeah, nothing too hot, I've got to say. So I'm just going to have you just attack, just attack that guy, whatever. I don't really care what you do be quite honest with you, because Estelle's gonna blast them again with another true hurricane. Yeah, so this is how you want to handle the fight. You have uh, two casters in the background blasting them with fire spells, and then you have, um, on top of that, you have Estelle blasting them with her fire true hurricane. Otherwise, these guys can be, can overwhelm you very quickly. Look how many allies they're calling. Look how much damage they're doing to you, and they're reducing your speed so you don't really even get a turn. Like, these guys can be a big, big pain if you are not prepared for uh, for the onslaught that's going to happen. But, thankfully, I am! So, there you go. Follow my lead, viewers, you'll be just fine. But even so, with all these preparations, um, it's still quite the hassle. I mean... This is taking a pretty long time, because you're not getting that many turns, you know? Uh, let's see... Probably kill... well... I'll kill him with this one, why not? Get his art in there faster, and not like he'd hit anybody else anyway. Aw, thought I'd kill him. That sucks. Eh, the next hurricane will kill him. If she gets a turn, now that her speed is knocked down... I wonder if that stacks. I'm, I'm really kind of curious, actually, but that should kill both of them. And then we just have the little straggler guy back there to kill, and then that'll be it. Not so bad at all. And we are actually... We're done with the sewers right now, this immediate sewers that we have right here. But as far as being done with the sewers in its entirety, no. There is still a huge part of the sewers left that we still have to deal with. Uh... I can't even get to this guy, we have like no movement whatsoever, so we'll just, I don't know, try. Oh, oh good, your movement never went down, thank god. You can actually do something, Zane. Sweet. Lots of experience, lots of sepith too. Nice. Sweet. Anyway, uh, we need to head back to uh, the liberal news to talk to Niall, I'll meet you there. Made it out of the sewer in one piece, let's head on into the uh, liberal news service. Let's see, going up here, and I want to talk to, I think it's you. Oh, Estelle! Hey, Chief, it's been a while. What do you need today? Business with Niall? Yeah, I got some questions on some guild business. Is he back from Wuhan yet? Yeah, he should be in the office. I think I saw him go to the reference room. Okay, well, let's go check him out. See what he's doing, see what he's up to. There he is! Hey, Niall, hello! Who in the hell? Well, what do you know, you guys? How you doing? Good day, Niall. Pardon our intrusion. Oh, it's that bard guy, and, uh, your highness, good day to you, yeah. You even have Zane the Immovable of a Calvard with you. You got kind of a gang going here, Estelle. A lot of stuff has happened since we met last. How's your coverage of the election in Rwan go? Damn, well, that's how. Got the article done thanks to in part to you guys. Speaking of, what brings you by today? Got a hot scoop for your old buddy Niall? Well, actually, we're the ones who'd like to know something. We heard the Liberal News received a threatening letter. You guys investigating that thing? I figured the military would have been taking care of that one. We're working on a request from the military, actually. So do you know anything? Well, I just got back to the capital, so I don't know too much. To be honest, I'd like to hear what you guys know, if anything. That's real helpful, Niall. Come now, you're a newsman. A hound for a good story. Surely you must have a clue as to who our villain is. Don't have time for this. Uh, that's a bit impolite, you two. Niall... I know this is a lot to ask, but please, if you know anything at all, please share it with us. Whoa, hey, your highness, you don't need to lower your head to me for crying fine. Okay, so this is kind of off the record, but we ain't the only ones who got a letter. Not even close. Licensed Fortress, the Cathedral, the Airship Company, the Hotel, both Embassies, Grandson Castle, and the Herb Royal Villa all got one too. There were nine letters in total. Something wrong? Niall, we heard that from the military already. What? 
damn it. That was my big scoop for the day. Doesn't look like we're going to get much out of this. Yeah, time to move on, I think. Now you wait just one second, Missy. You keep talking like that Nile Burn. Star reporter for the Liberal News is going to have a name worth a pile of crap. Right, all right. Let me, let me let you in on the take of this whole mess. Okay. You may want to be brief, Mr. Burns. Fine. Here's the short of it. My gut tells me this is some kind of huge prank. The threats aren't real. We thought that, too. You sound awfully sure, though. Mind telling us why you're so convinced? Well, trick is, I've covered terrorist threats like this before, but with this, there's no reality to the threat. Threats only work and have power if they describe, or at least imply, something nasty that's going to happen, you see? These letters have none of that. Mr. Burns does have a point. Disaster will be visited upon you does not offer much in the way of a specific terror. Exactly. I've got a hunch this isn't about stopping the signing ceremony at all. This is more about getting people worked up over a threat than sitting back and watching the fireworks. I see. That's kind of a good point. Uh, there is some sense behind it. I'm still bothered by the fact that so many letters were sent, though, and each and every one was sent to a place involved with the ceremony. For a prank, whoever did this seems to know a lot about what's happening. That does seem kind of true, on the surface. Think about it, though. All that information would be pretty easy to find with a little digging. Hell, I knew about those places weeks ago. Anyway, I'm gonna be working, working this. I'm gonna be working this on the assumption that it's a prank. Maybe you guys should stick to your guns about it being a real threat, and we can compare notes later. Good idea. Thanks, Nile. That actually helped a lot. Darn right it did. Just stop by for one stop swap stories. I'll be sitting around here till the pack signed. Speaking of sitting around here, I don't see Dorothy anywhere. Right. She's off working in the Bose region. I sent her there to snag some photos. Oh, for a special of some kind? Related to the Royal Army. You remember that old Fourth of the Sky bandits we're using as a base, right? The one that you guys busted. The army decided those rats had the right idea and claimed and repurposed it as a training facility. They're running airship pilot training out of there right now. Neat! So she went off to get coverage of the base then? That's the idea, yeah. I was a little worried about sending her out on her own, but gotta do it sometime. Dorothy out on her own, huh? Scary. Oh wait, duh, speaking of girls out on their own, what's up? Harold Hayworth, a traitor from Crossbell. Never heard of the guy. Pretty sure he's never been in our classifieds or a wanted column either. Figures. Uh, but hey, this is part of the job, right? If you guys are totally stuck, I'll help you out. We can put him up with the classifieds if you want. I even have a few people in Crossbell I can poke. Thanks, Nile. You're way more reliable than I thought you'd be. I think I need to upgrade my opinion of you. Of course you do. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Was I not reliable before? Just kidding. Alright, let's get back to the guild house then. Agate should be back by now. Yeah, okay, perfect. If, you're, if you aren't aware, there are many different, like, sub-series in Legend of Heroes series, and one of them just happens to... Why did I go in here? One of them just happens to be uh, the Crossbell Arc. So, uh, there's a whole different story on what happens in Crossbell, but those, unfortunately, are not yet released in America, and they might not ever be released in America, which is unfortunate, to say the least. We're back! Yo, there you are! Sorry, I know we're a bit late. Where's Tita and Renee? They returned just before you did. I believe that they're enjoying the spoils of a hard-fought shopping campaign on the second floor. Sounds like they had fun. Anyway, we've got a lot of report. I see, not bad. Sounds like you guys learned a lot. And we didn't get anything decisive, though. Did you find anything? I got Jack. Nobody had a single freaking clue who could have sent the letters. The head guy at the airship company was sweating courts that a demand for money might come in next. But at this point, not so much as another peep. Doesn't really narrow things down much. How likely do you think it is the society is behind all this? I don't think we can safely say that at this point. Their primary focus up till now has been experimenting with those bizarre gospel orbits they possess. And we know the gospels can create phenomena otherwise unimaginable. Those devices certainly haven't shown an ability to create threatening letters from nowhere, however. Yeah, this doesn't really seem like it matches the, the society's M.O. I guess Juwan and Zeiss just have me on the edge. No, it's perfectly understandable. Regardless, I think we can safely say we've done our part. I'll compile all your testimonies into a report. Could I ask you to deliver it to Colonel Sid at the Herb Royal Villa tomorrow? Sure. We didn't find the sender in the end, so I feel kind of bad, but I guess it's all we can do. Oh, Herb, right! Agate, did you find anything out about it, Renee? I did, actually, or actually I... Wait, let me start over. I went to the hotel first. 
The kid and her folks stayed there for about two weeks. Same room the entire stay. Typical tourist stuff. They just checked out this morning. Then I went to the cathedral. While they were here, the Haywards came to worship a bunch of times. Thing is, the priest who attended them said they felt off when they did. Like they were distracted during prayer or something. That would match what Miss Hilda said. Yeah. And then, at the airship company, that's where I found Zip. Wait, what? Harold, Sophia, and Renee Hayworth of Crossbell, right? There have been exactly zero passengers by that name and nationality coming through here for at least half a year. No way! That is a mystery. Though perhaps they travel by land. Did did you come to Liberal by land? You have to say, wait a minute. That can't be right. When we first met her, she was talking about landing in an airship. Right, at Air Laton. She said she saw a big lake on the way down. Troubling. It's possible they were traveling under assumed names. Assumed names? Why would they? They may have had something to hide, or they may have been hiding from someone. Either way, they must have known something was wrong before they set out. I've contacted every guild branch in the country about Renee's parents. For the moment, all we can do is wait for more information to come in. As for Renee herself, I think it would be best if she stayed in the care of the guild for now. Yeah, I'd feel terrible if she got wrapped up in something. You could leave her with me, maybe. This mission kind of feels personal right now. I was going to suggest that, actually. Thanks. The guild will pay for everyone's lodgings while you're in Grand Cell, naturally. And that includes Renee, so don't worry. Thanks. Speaking of staying the night, we might not actually need that tonight. You see... Oh, quite the invitation. I think I'll pass. The castle's a bit too rich for my blood, and I'm not really keen on staying there. Besides, it'll be easier for Elian to reach one of us at the hotel if something happens. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. We might hear something about Renee's parents. I guess I should stay at the hotel too, then. Sorry, Chloe. Eh, don't worry. I'll explain the situation to Hilda. I'm sure she won't mind. Zane and I are going to stay in our respective embassies. The princess shall retire to her castle, naturally. So that means you two and the girls will be staying at the hotel, then. Parting on these terms would be dreadfully dull. Since we're all together this evening, shall we enjoy a nice dinner at the bar? Good idea! And you know, I'd actually like to hear you play the piano again, Oliver. It's been a while. Ah, oh, sweet maiden. You know just how to pluck my heartstrings. Have you come to appreciate a mature flavor at last, I wonder? I'm gonna snap those heartstrings if you keep it up. Snapping or no, we should get going. With a group this large, it could be hard to find seating. Alright, let's gather up the kids and get on over to the bar. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, really? Oh, nice. They had a good time at dinner, then. Everybody joined them. Nice. Okay, let's split up here, then. Chloe, be careful on your way home. It's not that far. Oh, you live in Grand Cell? I do. I'll be staying at my grandmother's house. If you'll pardon me. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Good night. That was one heck of a party. Oliver even dragged poor Mueller into it. Yeah, well, you called up that reporter too, you know. I figured, what the heck. Did you have fun, Renee? Yeah, I did. The food was good and everyone was talking about neat stuff. Piano was really pretty too. Oliver's really good at it. And he's not all hot air when he calls himself a traveling performer, I guess. Sure you want to duck out early, Agate? Zane and the others are still having a lot of fun. Yeah, if I tried keeping up with Zane, I might not have a liver in the morning. Plus, I'm kind of beat from trolling the city all over today, so I'm just going to pack it in. Fair enough. Let's get to our hotel rooms, then. Yeah, my friends want me to go out pretty much every single weekend, and there's just no way. I'll go out Friday and Saturday, but not Sunday, too, and sometimes even Thursday they want me to go out, and it's just, ugh, no. Oh, that sucks. Uh, sure. How do you want to split them up, Agate? I don't care too much. Set it up however you want. I want to be with Miss Estelle. You've been busy with work, so we haven't had any time to talk at all. Well, aren't you such a brat? Uh, yeah, now Tita wants to be with Miss with uh, Estelle. Poor Agate. They're all n now. They want to all do three to a room. Yeah. <laughs> nobody wants. Nobody wants to stay with Agate. I'll be with you, kiddo. This reminds me of when we were hiding out with Gramps. Now that you mention it, it does. Wow, this room isn't like the one that I stayed in with Papa and Mama. There's a big building outside the window. Oh, so Joshua and I have to share this room for a while. What's wrong? Nothing really. More importantly, I'm sorry, Renee. 
Couldn't find your papa or mama today. It's okay. They promised they'd come get me. You don't need to search so hard. They're very good at hide and seek. Not as good as me, of course, but still very easily. Heh, <laughs> is that right? Well, then I won't try so hard to find them, but only if you're okay with it. It's okay. It's for the best. Never mind that right now. I have two big favors to ask of you. I can't tell unless you promise to do them ahead of time. Ah, <laughs> if it's something that I can do, I promise that I will. I want to call you from Estelle from now on. Huh? Oh, you mean drop the whole Miss part? Yeah, Tita gets to call you Estelle all the time, so I don't want to have to call you Miss Estelle. Is that right? I don't mind. I never stood that much of formality anyway. It's not like I'm your teacher or anything, so you really don't mind? I'm glad you like it. Call me Estelle as much as you want, Renee. Okay, makes me happy. That's good. So what was the other thing? Can you tell me why you were so surprised when we came into the room? You had this really sad, lonely look on your face. I want to know why. Is that okay? Yeah. I've actually stayed in this very room before, with someone else. Stepping in here just reminded me of him. Really? Was it your lover? Was this your love nest? What a bitch! Eh, not quite. He's someone I've known for a really long time. We've gotten very close, and but it's complicated. We're not together right now, though. Oh, well, what kind of man is he? What's his name? What does he look like? Well, his name is Joshua. He has black hair and amber eyes. He's pretty handsome, I guess. Actually, you'd call him more beautiful than handsome, really. Huh? Well, let's just say he made a great princess in a certain play. In fact, it looked amazing on him. Wow, that sounds fun. Can I meet him? When are you seeing him again? I don't really know, actually. You don't know when you'll see him again? That's why he looked sad, right? Sort of, but I'm okay. I'm going to find him and drag him back home, even if it takes years. But why did you seem so sad? Well, because I'm sure Josh was off somewhere and way over his head, and I can't do anything to help him. That makes me sad, I guess. Sorry, Renee. This must be pretty boring since you don't know Joshua at all. No, it's neat. Joshua was a really wonderful person, huh? Wonderful? Actually, well, right now I think he's a bit of a jerk. I mean, talk about selfish ways of saying goodbye. Taking my first... First what? Nothing, nothing at all. I'm tired. It's time to go to sleep. Ain't no fair. I'm not going to sleep until I hear the whole thing. I messed that one up. Stella and Renee went to bed but remained awake for a little while talking about various things. Eventually, once she could hear nothing but Renee's slow, peaceful breathing, Estelle gave into the exhaustion which had been piling up on her eyelids and fell into sleep herself. And, uh, I guess we're gonna have some dreams next time. Let's play Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky, second chapter. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.